There's a lot that can be said about Elon Musk, but there's no denying the fact that the entrepreneur slash engineer has seriously disrupted the aerospace industry with SpaceX. The private spacecraft engineering company was first launched by Musk 20 years ago and has already become a leading force in space transportation and innovation. Case in point, the SpaceX Starship, the super heavy lift launch vehicle, is the tallest and most powerful launch vehicle ever built. Super Heavy alone stands 70 meters tall, and the Starship upper stage spacecraft added another 50 meters of height. Together, they stand a whopping 120 meters tall, which is taller than NASA's massive Saturn V moon rocket. And this is exactly the reason why the process of rocket stacking always makes us feel extremely excited. But don't be sad if you accidentally missed previous stackings, because another chance to witness that majestic view is unfolding right before your very eyes. SpaceX's 120 meter tall massive rocket is getting ready for its full stacking today. After undergoing more than two weeks of robustness upgrades in the build site, SpaceX finally rolled out Super Heavy Booster 7 to the launch site on Friday morning. Notably, while many expected SpaceX to install blast protection shields over the Raptor engines of the booster before rollout, they only installed weird stuff that look like aluminum foils over the engines. It's unclear why SpaceX decided to install these strange covers over the engines instead of strong metallic blast protection shields, which begs the question, can they launch like this? It is clear that it doesn't seem like a good idea to use aluminum. Remember, SpaceX used it with their grid fins in the early versions of Falcon 9. They used aluminum grid fins and they were destroyed after each launch and were replaced. And at least at that time, B7 still looks the same as Booster 4, unlaunchable. So the aim of this rollout, most likely, is full stack tests only. As another factor in play, Ship 24, B7's vehicle pair, originally a Pad B resident at the suborbital launch site for some time, was moved to the tower at the OLS in readiness for Booster 7's return and the preparations for full stack. Ship 24 could be stacked on top of Booster 7 in the coming days. Road closures are scheduled for Monday through Wednesday for possible Starship testing, and a notice to Mariners has already been issued. Once stacked, SpaceX could conduct combined tests, including launch countdown simulations and eventual full-up countdown and a 33-engine static fire test. And most likely, the first fully integrated test of S24 and B7 will be the cryo test, similar to the first test of a full-stack starship on the iconic duo 420. For its first fully integrated test, SpaceX appears to have put Starship through a fairly limited cryogenic proof, which is a test where flammable propellant is replaced with a similarly cold or cryogenic fluid that's similar enough to subject a rocket to similar thermal and mechanical stresses. For Ship 20 and Booster 4's combined debut, Super Heavy was filled maybe 10 to 20 percent and Starship around 25 to 50 percent of the way with either liquid nitrogen or a combination of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen. It's difficult to tell, but it's unlikely any methane fuel was involved. Beyond the basic mechanical demonstration that Super Heavy Booster 4 is strong enough to support a partially loaded Starship, which probably wasn't in doubt, it's likely that the main purpose of this first full-stack cryo-proofing was to ensure that all the systems required to fuel Starship on top of Super Heavy were working as expected. That's no small feat given that Starship is both the tallest rocket and largest upper stage ever assembled. To fully fuel a Starship for an orbital launch around 1200 tons or approximately 2.65 million pounds of propellant or liquid nitrogen for a cryo-proof, which is equivalent to the weight of more than two entire Falcon 9 rockets, must be pumped around 85 meters or around 275 feet up Starbase's integration tower. That requires thousands of feet of plumbing and a symphony of giant valves and pumps, all of which must work in concert without leaking, jamming, or freezing to fuel Starship. As such, the first full-stack cryo-proof was just as much or more of a test of the orbital launch site's launch-slash-integration tower and tank farm. And if all goes well, Starship can move to the next phase of testing, full static fire tests. 
the Static Fire test campaign will culminate in a full-stack 33-engine Static Fire. SpaceX itself also is upgrading the orbital launch mount in preparation for the forthcoming 33-engine Static Fire test. They recently tested the structural integrity of the Super Heavy Booster hold down clamps with the help of a crawler crane. These clamps, mechanical devices designed to hold the booster to its work stand or keep it immobile on the launch mount during a variety of tests, work by reaching inside the lip of the booster's aft skirt, which sports a very sturdy ring of steel that 20 Raptor Boost engines mount to and push against. The 20 clamps fit precisely between each of those 20 outer Raptors and grab onto Super Heavy from the inside. If all ground tests go as planned without any major issues and SpaceX gets a launch license from the FAA, the orbital flight test will most likely take place by the end of this year. CEO Elon Musk says that it's highly likely SpaceX will be ready to attempt its first orbital Starship launch in November of 2022 and possibly as early as late October. And if successful, Starship will help to fulfill the promise of the space age that has been over a century in the making. When it's operational, if one can believe the claims of the SpaceX CEO, the Starship will be able to put 100 tons of anything in low Earth orbit. With refueling, that payload could go anywhere in the solar system. The cost will be $10 million per launch. Even with the need for refueling, Starship represents a quantum leap in spaceflight. No wonder some scientists who design and manage robotic space missions are starting to take a look at Musk's monster rocket. Starship could also send a massive probe into interstellar space, perhaps passing by some of the outer planets along the way like the Voyager probes did. The massive rocket could also launch space-based telescopes that could dwarf both the Hubble and the James Webb. Scientists also said that if Starship lives up to its billing, it could send missions to Neptune and its largest moon in the outer solar system, bringing back huge quantities of space rock from Earth's moon and Mars, and even developing innovative ways to protect Earth from incoming asteroids. In short, there are also plenty of grounds for excitement regarding what Starship could do if it is successful. From the inner to the outer solar system and possibly beyond, it may well open up a whole new era of space science. I'm sure that some very smart people are starting to think about sending scientific missions on Starship, says Abhishek Tripathi, a space scientist from the University of California, Berkeley. Or as Musk put it, it's really whatever you can imagine. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.